A system of equations is one or more equations. Um, systems can be linear functions or they can include quadratic functions, absolute value functions. So when you graph, when you solve a system, what you're trying to do is find the intersection of the graphs. Now, so in a linear function, you can have two lines that intersect once. That's called one solution. You can have two lines that never intersect because remember the slopes are parallel. In that case, there's no solution. And you can have slopes or you have two lines that intersect infinitely because they are the same. So if you had this black line and this blue line, there's an infinite number of solutions. So in a system of equations for linear functions, what you're going to do is graph the lines. Either they can be in slope-intercept form, they could also be in standard form or point-slope form, but you want to graph the lines. Then on the same coordinate grid, you want to graph each line, and then their solution is an ordered pair x, y. And here are the three different cases that we went over. So examples. Graph the lines, so I'm going to graph 2x minus 3, so I'm going to start at negative 3 and go up to right 1, and then connect the lines, or connect the dots. Then I'm going to graph y equals x minus 1, and connect the line, or connect the dots, and where they cross is my solution, so they cross at 2, 1. So this means that 2, 1 is a solution, is on this line and this line, and it works for both. So you can always check your answer. So check my answer. I'm going to let x be 2 and y be 1, and I'm going to plug it into the first equation. So does 1 equal 2 times 2 minus 3? Does 1 equal 4 minus 3? Yes, it does. Then I'm going to check the second one by plugging in 2 and 1. Does 1 equal 2 minus 1? Yes, it does. So because this point satisfies both of these equations, it's a solution to the system. Okay, second one. So I'm going to graph the first line, which is negative 1 half x plus 2. So I start at 2. And my slope is down 1, right 2. And I, oops, connecting the dots. Not very good at connecting. And then my second line is starting at negative 3 and going down 3, up 1. So right here I can see the solution. It's a little sloppy, but it's negative 2, 3 is the ordered pair for x and y. So I could substitute x is negative 2 and y is 3 into both equations and it would work. And you can check yourself. Okay, it's third one. So I'm going to graph the first line starting at negative 1 as my y-intercept and my slope is negative 2. Then I connect. Then I'm going to do my second line, starting at 1, and my slope is negative 2. So I connect. So in this case, the lines do not intersect. They are parallel, so it's no solution. So what I can kind of tell from the get-go that in both of these equations are in slope-intercept form, and the slopes were the same, and the y-intercepts are different, so they're never going to intersect. But if you have the same slope and the same y-intercept, it's going to be the same line, and it's going to be infinite solution. So I'm going to write the next one in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to subtract x and divide by 2. So it's going to be y equals 4 minus, this part's going to be 1 half x. 
So I have two lines, this line, my red line, I'm gonna graph first. So I start at two and go down one, right two. And the second one, I start at four and go down one, right two. So in this case, the lines don't intersect, so the lines are parallel, so you're still going to have no solution, is going to be my answer. So you can determine if a point is a solution to the system by substituting the x and the y in for both equation 1 and equation 2 and seeing if it satisfies both. So is the point 2, 1 a solution? So if I plug in y, which is 1, equal 2 times x, which is 2 minus 3, do I get, does it work? Yes. Now I'm going to plug it into the second one. Does 1 equal 2 minus 1? Yes. So yes, it's a solution. You need to have it work for both equations, though. You ca it cannot be a solution to the system if it works for one and not the other. Some sometimes the reason we have systems is for s word situations, so real life situations. So if I'm gonna take an aerobics class, non-members cost four dollars a class. So the cost. You could do cost, or C, or you could do F of X, or you could do Y. So cost equals $4 per class, where I'm going to let X be class. Whereas members pay $10 plus $2 per class. So what you want to do to solve this by graphing is you're going to label X classes. You're going to graph the classes and you're going to graph C, which is the cost in dollars. So cost depends on the number of classes you take. That's why I put cost going up and down and classes going side to side. So my classes, I'm going to go up by one, one, two, three, four, etc. And then cost, I'm going to go up by two dollars. So this will be two dollars. Four dollars, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty. Now I'm going to graph each function. So I'm going to graph c equals four x. So the y-intercept is zero, but I'm going to go up four dollars, right one, up four dollars, right one. It looks like I'm going up two, right one, but you got to look at the scale here. Then I'm going to graph cost equals 10 plus 2x. So $10, up to right one, up to right one, up to right one. So where the red and the blue intersect is at 2, 3, 4, 5. Five classes here. I'm going to double check this. So, one, two, three, four, five. Up one, right two, up one, right two. Okay. So, at five classes, the cost is the same. So, I'm going to check does it make sense with my equations if I got five? So, if I let x be five, the cost is 20 for this function. If I let x be five, the cost is 20 for this function. So at five classes, they are the same. So you want to become a member if you're going to do more than five classes. If you're not going to do five classes, then you should just not be a member.